In the last movie, we changed the name of index.html inside our public folder. And as a result, when we tried to load up the root of our application, just simply localhost colon 3000, we got back a routing error. So we need to understand how Rails parses the requests that come in into controllers and actions. Now routes is a very big topic, and there are lots of advanced features in routes. So we're going to stick to three basic route types for now. We're going to be looking at simple routes, default routes, and the root route. To start with, let's jump back to our application. So I've still got my web server running. You can see I've still got the routing error in my browser window. To remind ourselves, if we were to type demo slash index, we do still get our hello world page. So Rails routing is working, at least in some context, because it's able to route this request to the correct controller and action. It's just not able to route that other request. If we take a look at the output that it gives us, notice this part right here. Get, all in caps, and then a string, demo index. It's making a get request for that string. That's the request that's coming in. It's actually the browser request. That's the request that comes to the web server, and the web server tries to find a file that matches that, and then when it can't find that file, it passes that request along to the Rails routes. So Rails routes takes that and then parses it to figure out the correct controller and action. It does that by using a set of routing rules, and those rules are in the config folder inside routes.rb. So everything having to do with our routing rules is stored in this config file, routes.rb. If you open it up, there's a lot of commented out samples of different kinds of routes that we can do. Don't worry about most of those. What I want you to notice for now is the top line here, get demo slash index. That was added for us when we generated our controller in our action. The generate command actually opened up this file and added this bit of text to the top of it. So be aware, first of all, that when you generate something, it does add something to your routes file. That's good to remember. But we also need to understand how this rule that it added to our file does the job of routing that request to the right place. So when you have this simple routing rule, get demo index, that's actually a shortcut for a standard matching route, which is match demo slash index, match that exact string, and when you see it, send it to demo index, demo being the controller, index being the action. The pound sign, or you can call it the number sign or the hash sign that's in between those, that's how we separate the two. So it's always going to be that format. To the controller, pound sign, and then the action. So that's what it's doing. It's saying when you see this exact string, it's not actually parsing it, right? There's no parsing taking place. It's just recognizing a single string. That's why I'm calling this just a simple route. All it's doing is saying, when you see this text, send it here. If you were to replace that line, get demo index with match, and then in quotes you put something ridiculous, let's say the word ridiculous, to demo index, then if you went to localhost colon 3000 slash ridiculous, guess what? You'd get back your index page. It's just looking for a single string. So that's a simple route. Overall, it's not super useful because every time we want to have a URL, we have to specify where it goes. It'd be a lot better if we had something that was flexible. Right? Something that would allow us to vary the controller and vary the action that we wanted while still retaining a single rule that could parse those. Well, for that, we have a default route. So let's take a look at the default route structure. What we want is a rule that will separate the controller and the action and the ID with slashes. All right? So we're going to have the slash in between them so that we know that what's in front of the slash is the controller, then comes the action, then comes the ID. So when a request comes in like get students edit 52, then what we want is to map that to the students controller and the edit action, right? That's what it's going to do using its default route rule. So what does that rule look like? Well, it's another match statement. Match, and we're going to use symbols this time, all right? By having the colon in front of it, we're telling it it's a Ruby symbol. This is not just the string controller. This is a special thing we're putting in there. It's like a variable. So whatever's in the first part, that's the controller then a slash, then next comes the action, then a slash, next comes the ID, and then last of all, we actually allow it to pass in the format as well. We'll assume the format is .html every time, but we could ask for other kinds of formats, like .xml, .js, but for now, we're just going to be assuming that it is HTML every time. Now, I realize that there's one other thing in there, which is the parentheses, and we'll come back to that in just a second. But for now, let's get that default route working. We've got our simple route working already. Let's get the default one working. Now, what you want to put your default route always is the lowest priority. And it tells you here, priority is based on order of creation 
first created highest priority. Order of creation means the order it is in the file. So this right now has the highest priority. Whatever's down here at the bottom will be the lowest priority. What we want to do is uncomment this line right there. There's our default route. We now have it set as the lowest priority. If no other routing rules before it can take effect, if it doesn't match anything else, the very last thing it'll do is try and apply this rule. Try to parse whatever you got with controller slash action slash ID dot format. See if that works. And that'll be the very last thing that it tries. So because we have this rule, we no longer need our simple rule up here. We can actually comment it out because now it'll figure out that demo is the controller and that index is the action. Let's save it and let's just try it. It's always a good idea when you're working with your routes file to go ahead and stop your web server and restart it again. That'll just ensure that the changes to your routes file did get loaded. So let's try again, demo index. Great, it still goes there. It still was able to parse it. This time it did it not by matching the exact string, but by figuring out, ah, the thing between these slashes is the controller, okay? So that's Rails default routing. And that's what we're gonna be using most of the time. But notice that it still doesn't work if I just try and go to the root of the application. For that, we need the root route. And the root route is simply a match, but it also has a shortcut. And it's gonna be root, just the word root, and then to, where do we want it to go to? That's it, so that's the command. Tell the root to go to this place. So let's install that. I think it's always a good idea to put your root route up at the top. So let's do root and then to, this is just a simple hash. And then where is it going to go to? It's going to go to demo and pound index. So there we are. So we're gonna tell it root should go to that location. Now let's go back. Let's just stop our web server and restart it again, just to make sure. And now let's try and load it up. And there we go, we get our hello world page. So now we've seen three different kinds of routes. We've seen a simple string matching route, right? It just matches the string. We've seen the default routing where it actually parses out the controller action and ID for itself. And now we've also seen how to point the root of our application to a specific controller and action.